growing up was tough. I was bullied a lot. I was smart, but I was built differently from the average girl. I didn't want to go to school. I just couldn't concentrate, couldn't focus. I was terrified. That's how I learned how to run fast, is by running from my bullies. I was running so much that I even had considered committing suicide to avoid getting beat up more and more and more. And my grandmother said, God blessed you with that athletic frame. They don't understand it. But as long as you use the gift that God gave you in that body, you're going to go out there and you're going to whip some ass. Little brown poor girl who was bullied a lot, who thought even about committing suicide, who was terrified, who moved school to school, school to school, school to school, ran from everyone. How did she become? the most dangerous woman in the world. I grew up in Chester, Pennsylvania. It's a suburban area outside of Philadelphia. And didn't even know I was poor until I went to college and went on out in the world and realized that, wow, we were really poor, but we were happily poor. My school experience in chess was tough because I was bullied a lot. And my uncle, he was a martial art instructor. He said, listen, you can't continue to run all your life for you. He said, now this is what we're going to do. I want to introduce you to karate. I said, I don't want to fight. He said, it's not about fighting. What we're going to do is rebuild your self-confidence. Every Saturday, I would spar with my uncle for one hour. He would walk in, lock the door, and put the key down behind him. The goal was for me to get the key, unlock it, and walk out. But I had to get past him. He went tough on me, just like a man would. And I would always find myself getting closer to the key, and then he'd move me back. I find myself getting closer and closer to the door, he moved me back. Then finally, I'll never forget the day I fought my way past, got the key, unlocked the door, and walked out. That's how I earned my black belt. Then they started entering me in tournaments, and I started winning them left and right, getting first place, getting second place. A few times I got disqualified, but I just wanted more and more and more because I found a new love. Not only were my skills getting sharper and growing and improving, but I also realized that my confidence was starting to develop and grow and get stronger, as well as my self-esteem. And once those were all together, the rest was history. I'll never forget seeing Sensei Benny Urquidez. I saw him fighting on TV in Germany. He's one of the famous kickboxing world champions. And I was like, that's what I want to do. So I wrote his name down, his gym information, everything that I saw on TV. Packed up everything. Then I went out there to California and went straight and knocked on Sensei Benny the Jet Urquidez's door. He had a whole stable of fighters and they were champs. And here I am, don't even know how to kickbox, but I know karate. I'm in this combat training center, training with some of the best world champions on the planet, and I have the opportunity to be a part of their team. I was on cloud nine. I was like a sponge. I wanted to learn everything. Then they started getting me fights, one by one. Getting me fights, and I was winning. And then the next thing I know, It was probably about 2.30, 3 a.m. in the morning. I'm tired, I'm done, I'm ready to go. And this gentleman was there. So dude was like, look, I'll take you home. So we're driving on down. I tell him, oh, I'll make it right here in Coliseum. Suddenly he makes a left turn and I'm like, this is not where I live. I live this way. He was like, look here, why don't you just give me a little, let me just stick it in. I said, no, man, I don't want you sticking it in. And I tried to bust out the door, but I couldn't because there was no knob. And I ran to the back of the van to try to run out the back of the van. There was this big chain on it and a lock. I couldn't get out. And when he tried to tackle me, I grabbed the end of his shirt tail and I pulled it over him real fast, tied it, and I swung him back. And I pulled his pants down over his shoes. Then I stepped on his chest and I said, where the keys at, motherfucker? He said, they're in my pocket. 
I reached in, I grabbed the keys, I pulled the chain off. I said, let me tell you something, man. When a bitch says no, she means no. Can I hit it? Wait! And I ran. 15 years later, here I am, retired, coming in from the gym, turn the TV on, and they got him right there. Major break in the search for a serial killer. L.A. police do have a suspect now in the grim sleeper case. They arrested the man early this morning, identified as Lonnie David Franklin Jr. I picked the phone up real fast. I caught my mother. I caught my grandmother. I was like, you know that guy who tried to rape me in the van about 15 years ago? He's a serial killer. He had raped and killed over 100 black women in Inglewood and killed them in his car and his van. To this day, I have PTSD as a result of that van experience. But what I didn't know then is that that fight in the van was just a warm up for what was to come. I had no idea the magnitude of the fight. It was battle to master some of the greatest martial arts in the world. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Who am I fighting? The most dangerous woman in the world. The most dangerous woman in the world! Valerie Hennon was her name. Her record was 27 and two. At the time, I was actually talking to my mom on the phone. She said, listen, how the hell is she gonna be the most dangerous woman in the world when I am? She said, you go out there and tell her that I said that you were the one that her mama warned her about. And when my mom said that, it sparked the fight in me. Press conference time come, they call us out. She says to me, I looked on the map and I couldn't find Chester. And I just said, listen, tonight you will find out where Chester is on the map. And I want you to know that I'm the one your mama warned you about. And I just stood there. Next thing you know, they're calling us, it's showtime. I knew it was the world championship fight and I knew it was pay per view. But when I stepped into San Jose's arena, I saw over 10,000 people. I was blown away, like, whoa, this is serious. Going to the ring, I'll never forget hearing people yell, that's the black girl who came here and get knocked out. And while they were saying that, I said a silent prayer to God. Tonight, Father, we are going to shock the world. So we fought, and it was hard. I got cuts under my eyes, stitches. Third round, my legs was getting tired. And I said, oh God. Oh God, you gotta help me, my legs are getting tired. And at that time when I said it, I threw a kick, boom! Came back out, bam! And hit her with an overhand right, right in the back of her head, knocked her out. And Valerie Hennon goes down. Two strong right hands by Frida Gibbs, and Hennon is not gonna get up on. It is over. Frida Gibbs with a surprising, surprising knockout of Valerie Hennon. I was stunned. They said I won, I shocked the world. And I yelled it, I shocked the world. But what's so beautiful about it is, there's a picture of the day when I knocked her out, my hands up and she's on the mat. And right there, the clock is 8.16. That's my mama's birthday. And at that time, I kind of teared up because that's when I realized that I had just did something really special. I am today as it stands, the first black female combat pay-per-view world champion on the planet. Before Layla Ali, before Amanda Nunes, before Ann Wolf, Cyborg, before any of them came, they stand on my shoulders. I was always put in there as a punching bag, but you know what? Out of all that hell, that negativity, that adversity, guess what? I came out on top. If I could say something to my bullies, what I would say is thank you. Thank you for helping me to become one of the fastest runners of Pennsylvania and all American. Thank you for helping me to build my self-confidence, my self-esteem. Thank you for teasing me because I had an athletic frame. Thank you because look at me now. Look at me now. Frida Gibbs, a punch that came from nowhere.